Welcome everyone to the amazing, the grand, the esteemed, the prolific, the embarrassing, and the downright shameful Fan Fiction Friday. That was seven adjectives. I it think. was it was seven adjectives because seven is the magic number. And if there's one thing that Fanfic Friday is, it's magical. Crap, that's the eighth adjective. But welcome to a weekly series <laughs> where we throw a bunch of categories into three bags, and the categories are characters, locations, and scenarios. And we draw two characters, a location, and a scenario, and Flavor. that forms a story, a structure of a story that we have to write within 30 minutes. My story this week featured the characters Xena of the Warrior Princess fame, Ooh. and the second character is Paul Blart Mall Cop. Wow. Or as we call him on Tumblr. Tumblr? Tumble. On Tumblr! Boot Scoot Moop Coop. Boot Scoot Moot Coop. What do they call Xena? Ball Ball Hall. <laughs> ball Ball Flesh Wall. <laughs> what, what do they call Xena on Tumblr? I don't know, Xena. Xena. <laughs> Xena Fiend Beam. Okay, the location, which I was very excited about, is Dracula's Castle. And as locations go, you don't get much better. Like, imagine a film shoot taking place there. One of the classic films was filmed in a vampire's castle. No Nosferatu. Wow, wow, really? But it was Dracula. No, Nosferatu. Which is Dracula, isn't it? I mean, I mean it's, a, it's, like a, it's the public Dracula's domain version of dad. Dracula. Uh, the, Dracula's the public domain version of Dracula. What are you on about? He's owned by what, whoever wrote Dracula. What? Who is dead and died like Them, hundred that, years Their ago. estate still owns the story, I imagine. I don't know. Bram Stoker. That's not how copyright Internet, law works. Internet, help Listen. us out and tell us in the comments no, who's right. No, please don't. Copyright, <laughs> copyright is the real vampire here. It sucks the blood out of creativity. I think we'll agree. Yeah. <laughs> Making a stand. Okay, yes. but that was Dracula's Castle was suggested by Ruth McNally, so thank you for that, Ruth. Thanks, Ruth. Made yeah. a very baroque choice for for this setting of the story. And you know what I always say: if it's not baroque, quote don't in the fix beast. it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the scenario, which really this is what stumped me until I thought a very specific thing which barely features in the story, but it, it, it was sort of the, the thing that tied everything together, was competing in a baking competition. So keep all that in mind as you listen to this tall tale. Is Dracula going to brag about his sexual exploits Please. to the cakes? No. Dracula actually has no dialogue. Oh, good. This is bullshit. He eats the cake. <laughs> the story is called Heart of Blartness. Heart, Heart, Heart of, of Blartness? Blartness? Yes. Okay, Thank I'm, you. Ready. I'm ready. I, I needed that you saying it in unison to make the title have its full effect. I want to see it in like appear over a castle with like dripping green ooze. <laughs> there was the embarrassing sound of a half a dozen coffins flipping onto one another in sequence, like a row of morbid dominoes, accompanied by the frenzied shrill wailing of a man in his mid-forties trying to retain his balance while sacrificing all of his dignity. If written down, the sound went something like this. Kachunk, 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 stumpf blarg. It loses something in the writing. Wow, Paul Blart has his own onomatopoeia. Wow. Yeah. Onomatoblata. On a blotopoeia. Oh. Paul Blart stood over the unfortunate mess he had created out of his owning. <laughs> <laughs> Out of his own. No, on a blartopoeia. Just I was gonna. I was thinking like that sounds like a like a diuretic. Oh, it like is. Like a really bad accident. I've got and a bad then case of the were, like, His mess. <laughs> okay, start over that part. Yeah, sure. Paul Blart stood over the unfortunate mess he had created out of his own incredulous ability to break everything around him. Even the unbreakable stuff. For example, the ancient tome of dark magics, which was so powerful they spelled magic with a K on the cover, placed on the altar of, placed on the altar on the opposite end of the row of coffins. That exploded in a cloud of purple energy, accompanied by the sound of the ancient words scribbled within, screaming themselves aloud one final time before being cast into the obscurity of another hellish dimension. That Paul kind of Blart three. That's right. <laughs> the Blardening. <laughs> that kind of thing hadn't happened in Dracula's castle before. Not until the fanged bloodsucker had hired a security guard to watch over his abode while the ageless undead parasite slumbered. Paul Blart had jumped at the chance to work a gig like this. Or at least, he had stumbled comically at the chance to work it. Getting to travel to Transylvania with his daughter Maya had been a dream come true. Oh How do you know he has a daughter? It's part of the storyline, it's part of the deep yeah. lore of Paul Blart. Is it? Deep lore! Is Have it you like not checked Blartopedia? No. <laughs> you idiot. 
I don't. <laughs> Onomatopedia. That just sounds like like a stool mixed with blood, like like a disorder. There's a lot of that in this as well. Okay, great. Okay. All right. But what sort of benefits does Dracula give his workers? Uh, immortality. Wait, so he's a vampire? I'd like to think. Oh my god. It's in the subtext. We know. That's why there's going to be... All blart, bent, poop. Have you never noticed that Kevin James has not aged in since Hitch or King of Queens? Have you not noticed that? I mean... Who's that? Paul Blart. Getting to travel to Transylvania with his daughter Maya had been a dream come true. Or so he'd thought before being presented with the creepy, rickety bridge he'd had to cross to get from the civilized part of the country to the significantly less civilized Castle Dracula. The job paid well, he was working for a count for crying out loud, and if watching Sesame Street with his little girl had taught him anything, it's that you could always trust a count to give you a high-figure salary. If only so he can vocally count all the way up to the six-figure digit, and then laugh while a cheesy lightning sound effect played. This Count Dracula, however, wasn't nearly as fuzzy, nor did he enjoy his work to the same extent as his Muppet counterpart. But still, he was getting paid several thousand drachmas per day. He wasn't sure how much that was in euros, but the coins were big and shiny in gold, and nothing was more valuable to him than the glee in Maya's eyes when they both took turns to put each individual coin into her piggy bank. The satisfying clink of the coin landing within the porcelain porker's belly made her face light up. I but, really hope that Dracula's paying them in, like, shrewd bucks. <laughs> the satisfying clink of the coin landing within the porcelain porker's belly made her face light up, but not too much. Dracula had a very strict rule about no natural light within the castle's grounds. That had become a moot point when, uh -huh. to Paul's surprise on his second week on the job, was that a delayed groan? Yeah. Oh. That had become a moot point when, to Paul's surprise, on his second week on the job, the castle was broken into, and very nearly broken altogether. Oh my god, maybe he sucks at his job. It's possible. It's possible. He may not be qualified. Ouch. Xena, the warrior princess, had busted her way inside with all the subtlety of a cornered rhinoceros in a tight leather corset. Her war- her war- Wow! <laughs> That is an insult to Lucy Lawless. Why? You were like, oh yeah, a rhinoceros in a leather corset. Deadly oh, animal. <laughs> Charging in. Come on. It's All not right. about her of weight or anything. Okay. I'm not let, saying she looks you like a rhino. Right. Wait. You're a huge slam on rhinos right there out of nowhere. I love rhinos. Well, then but shouldn't it be a women. compliment? Of course not, but mm -hmm. she has the strength of a rhino. Everything okay. is offended now. Yeah. And rhino culture. All of my feminine body parts are offended. Say rhino to rhino culture. Her war cry of I've always wanted to do that, by the way. Reverberated throughout the dilapidated fortress, loud enough, thank you, to wake the dead. Well, almost. Dracula was a sound sleeper. Paul Blart knew this because he had Pratt fallen and belly flopped onto pretty much every loud object in the building, and it had done nothing to wake his thrifty, blood-sucking employer. He'd even done that trick where you dip the sleeping person's fingers in warm water, and it didn't so much as result in the faintest trickle of urine from the wizened fiend's under robes. Oh, it's it, just dust. It was still funny, though, especially when accompanied by Paul Blart's trademark Blartisms. <laughs> what is it? Whoa! What? what? What is a trademark blood? blood I'm about to show you. Shit. Whoa, ho, 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 hold on, Missy! Paul emitted a defined blartism in the direction of the steely eyed muscular Amazon that had backflipped unnecessarily into his Transylvanian turf. I'm afraid we're closed for the night. Mr. Dracula needs his beauty sleep. And trust me, if you've seen him, you know he needs it. Wow! Hoo! Hwee! Hoo! Whoa! Ha! Sheesh! Ksha! <laughs> you just gotta get them all out there. Zena Wait, hold on, why is it closed for the night? Dracula's awake during the night. Paul Blart. So he's just been guarding Paul during Blart. the long time of day. Paul Blart. <laughs> Paul Blart. Paul Blart. But Dracula's, Paul. Dracula's probably dead. W. Blart. <laughs> What's his Boot. middle name? B Blart. Xena held up a finger, silencing Paul's unstoppable train of goofy mouth noises. Her free hand rested poised on her chakram at her side. The name's Xena. Warrior Princess. You might have heard of me. Oh yeah? Well, the name's Paul Blart. Paul Blart? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Paul well, Blart is Paul's Blart's... Paul's Blart's... <laughs> We're never gonna get that. What just happened? Paul Blart is Paul's Blart's? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say Paul Blart's wife, but... You descended into hell. Paula Blart is Paul Blart's wife. No, no, it's Paul Blart's. Paula Blart is Paul's Blart's. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, the name's Paul Blart. Mole Cop. And much like you, I also have many skills. 
Impress me. Zena's voice was hushed and sultry, a mask to hide her wild and vicious nature. Paul wobbled in place for a minute, and then whistled through his fingers as if by magic a segue forged from the decaying flesh of Dracula's victims rolled unpleasantly towards him. What? Yes. He hopped onto Paul Blart. He hopped onto his steed, a gift from his ancient master, the company car, so to speak. It buckled and cried out beneath him, multiple mouths splitting open and bleeding from their deformed lips. Strangely, it was still all very amusing because it was happening to Paul Blart. I want one. Ride em, cowboy! Paul Blart hollered anachronistically, for this story took place neither in the Old West or in some sort of derby scenario. He rode the mutant Segway back, in, back and forth in front of Dracula's coffin where his master slept. He attempted to spin donuts with it, but then noticed he was leaving behind a trail of blood and scabby flesh, <laughs> and it made progress rather difficult. He spun in place and faced Xena, an exasperated expression on his face. Like to see you do that. I've ridden much scarier looking things, Zena remarked after she'd finished yawning. Ted Raimi, for example. She did not ride Ted Raimi. She held up the circular weapon she'd been fingering and hurled it upward, the chakram shattering a stained glass window that depicted Dracula in his youthful state, surrounded by creatures of the night. Now instead of glass, the castle wore a gaping wound, through which an intense beam of sunlight now pierced. It honed in on Dracula's exposed body, his coffin having been flipped over by Paul Blart's own frantic stumblings. This Dracula guy? Not much of a challenge. I had a harder time fighting Bacchus. Bacchus was a vampire and Xena warrior princess, the TV show. Thank you. You fought B.A. Baracus? Was all Paul Blartwood could think to say as his employer began burning to a crisp behind him. He gulped, sniffing the air and noticing the distinct bite of singed, undead flesh in the air. I said air twice. Then he barreled off the deformed, stitched-together corpses masquerading as a segue and stumbled to Dracula's side, trying in vain to blow on the flames rising from his sleeping frame. Xena rolled her eyes at the goofy scene taking place before her. For some reason, she was reminded of Joxer. She strode forward, hips swaying pleasantly beneath her as she watched the villainous creature slowly succumb to the holy flames. Then she gave Paul Blart a supportive slap on the black. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Black. More black. <laughs> the most supportive slap on the black. On the Blart. Right on the Paula Blart. <laughs> then she gave Paul Blart a supportive slap on the back. Looks like I win the baking contest, she quipped. No! Yes! <laughs> Paul Blart looked up at her, his mustache twitching in confusion. He didn't understand actual humor or witty dialogue. <laughs> the only stuff that made sense to him was slapstick and loud exclamations in a falsetto, also fat jokes. Then Xena brought her horse Argo into the castle and had her kick Paul Blart until he turned into a CGI model of Paul Blart, because that's what happened at the end of his last movie. That's the only reason that happened the end. Uh, you guys didn't like it. No, we did. Okay. We were disturbed. It was I'm just disturbed. really disturbing. It had twists. Isn't that great turns. though? Because it's Paul Blart being Paul Blart, but then it's like this terrifying monstrosity. Yeah, it was terrifying. I want to read more. Yeah, right? I want to know more about uh, what yeah. he did at Dracula's castle and like, well, what, what else? Well, like why he, could... he can summon demon segues. Well, Dracula. Dracula gave it to him. That is like, yeah, here, here's this it. reanimated corpse that will just follow your command. And so Paul Blart's like, this is cool. That's true. I just want to see, like, Paul Blart blarting for all of the, like, horror movie stuff. Hashtag Blart. Yeah. Like, like what if he was just, like, Paul the Blart wolf versus the Wolfman, yeah. Versus, now he's working with him. But because he's Paul Blart, he's working against him because he's an idiot. Paul Blart should be in the Universal Monster Movie Cinematic Universe. <laughs> I agree. Okay, Paul Blart anyway. versus Paul's Blart. <laughs> Paul's Blarts. So, you guys ready for my story? Yeah. Stop! <laughs> Come here. <laughs> you ready for my story? Stop! Okay. Well, I guess that's it for Fan Fiction Friday. <laughs> Uh, this week, I drew Gina from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and I also got Space Core from Portal, suggested by Janda9950. And I feel like this is the one time when Space Core's conversation will be more relevant than the, the other person. Strangely enough, I somehow drew a location made by the same suggester, Janda9950. Janda9950, you're yeah. working overtime. They got... You're a regular Paul Blot. They sing... <laughs> They suggested a uh, location, yeah, and they get a six-figure salary paid and entirely in Miller bucks. And a daughter. Yeah. And a daughter. Surprise. You're welcome. <laughs> She'll be coming in the mail shortly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so location was a sketchy back alley, and the scenario was wake up amidst a grisly murder scene with no memory. So Gina and Space Corps 
going to have some shit I to answer I feel like for. the space call with memory is the same as the space call without memory. Yeah, basically. Yeah. It was cold, like space. It was loud, like space. It was populated, like space. This could be either character's perspective <laughs> right now, honestly. Yeah. Oh <laughs> It was now that the Space Corps realized it had never been to space, so it didn't actually know whether or not these comparisons were accurate. Facts were not about to dampen its spirits, however. Space was everything. Space was its whole life. So if it wanted to compare this dark walkway between two buildings that was currently littered with organs, loose gelatinous chunks of skin, and thick pieces of brain to the beauty and majesty of space, no one was allowed to tell it it was wrong. These stories are so graphic. <laughs> We're we regular. had these innocent little stories. I know mine had Dracula in it, but I didn't have to get old. Mine person. featured a grisly murder scene. Right, but I didn't have to be It's that only going to get better from here, folks. Fan Fiction Friday is brought to you by George Paul Blart Martin. <laughs> Fan Fiction Friday is rated blot. <laughs> <laughs> no one was allowed to tell it it was wrong. It rolled awkwardly on the ground to get its bearings, having I only come out of hibernation a moment before. Red appeared in the corner of its vision, and it processed the sound of shallow water on the ground before it hit a large mass lying in the middle of the alleyway. A groan came from beside the core, and the mass began to move into a seated position, knocking it back through the red water until it hit another soft mass. A woman-shaped human was what knocked him back. It hers long, flowing rabbits. Or were they hairs? Rabbits? Falling... What? Yeah. Long, flowing rabbits. That was brilliant. I'm sorry, I was really excited by the vision. <laughs> No, because hair, yeah. but it's spelled hair with H-A-R-E. Oh. <laughs> Can I groan at that one? Am I allowed to groan at that one? Yeah. I was very impressed until I realized you... Because I thought the space code just was like, I don't understand what hair is. No, it doesn't. Okay, but I thought visually it was like, that's a rabbit. No. <laughs> but it's like, it just confused it me. It was a pan. Okay. A, a pan. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go well. It was a pun. <laughs> It was a pan. pan. There's a pan hanging from her head. Oh, is there? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Leave me alone. You're confusing me. A woman-shaped human was what knocked him back. It hers long flowing rabbits, or were they hairs, falling past her slender neck and arm supports. Blue eyes, spelled I apostrophe S. Blue eyes appeared behind it hers half-closed skin to eye covers, currently clouded with confusion. Space I'm Corps. clouded with confusion right now. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit. Space Corps thought it she was magnificent. Like space. It her blue eyes met with its ocular receiver. A curious look spreading across it her head features. It's too early for this. <laughs> space Corps thought it might be horror, but the interpretation of emotions was not its primary function. It she pulled out a telephone from its non-skin pocket, furiously dialing a short number. What? What is her skin pocket? N I don't that's know. That's the not skin pocket. Yeah, that's she the not skin, pocket. skin pockets. Uh, maybe Cleavage. here? I don't okay, know. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you guys went for a different direction. Yeah. Yes. Because I know a few pockets. Hell no. She's on the phone now. I oh, know. Jake! It's Gina. Remember this afternoon when I told you that I needed to fuel my soul with experiences that were beyond your mortal understanding? I lied. I was just going to a bar. Someone's been killed, so you might want to bring homicide with you. I think I might just go home. There was screaming on the other line so loud that Space Corps did not have to raise its gain on its audio perceptors in order to hear it. The It Gina looked bored as the other person thing told her loudly to stay. It She hung up the phone, leaning on a large green trash box beside her as she waited. So, what are you? Are you a tiny, round murderer? A <laughs> 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 little compartment opens up and a teeny knife sticks out. I get you. Uh, hey man, we don't know who the murderer is That's yet. That's true! Yeah. That's true. Could be Gina, it could be Space Corps, no Do one knows. Do we find out? I don't know. You'll have to Let's find out. see! Yeah. I don't like being joked around. So what? Oh, do you not? No. <laughs> nope. So what are you? Are you a tiny round murderer? It she asked, breaking the silence between them. What is murder? Is it from space? I guess that depends on what movie you're watching. She, Gina, responded. Personally, I'm not a fan of those kinds of movies because they don't usually have murderers that I can objectify. Like you, for example. What is me? <laughs> I don't know what this voice is. What do you mean? <laughs> 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 mana mana. 
<laughs> You're a weird little weird round thing. It's impossible for me to emphasize with or sexualize something that isn't human shaped. So That's she why. To me on our first date. <laughs> oh. It's why I have to answer most phone calls while looking into a mirror. <laughs> weird thing sounds good. I like good. What? Whatever helps you sleep at night, I guess. It, she said, getting to it her feet. Either way, I should probably arrest you. Like, you're covered in blood and sitting next to a dead body. So, arrest, detain, murder, death, space. <laughs> space? <laughs> yeah, the jail is a space, sure. Not a space. Space. Space is space. Space is good. Space is best. Whatever you say, weirdo. Speaking of, whatever you say will most likely be held against you in a court of law or something, I think. I don't know. This is the most work Gina has ever done. Yeah. yeah definitely. I, I don't know how they would literally hold it against you, though. Do you not believe that space is good? Can we please move on from the space thing and get to the part where I arrest you? Because where are your hands? Space <laughs> is good. <laughs> <laughs> The ocular sensor on his faceplate turned red. Soon, everything else did too. Oh, oh, he was the murderer. <laughs> oh. The end. Who died? Oh, no! <laughs> who died? It's Jesus interpretation. Died. But who died first? I don't know. <coughs> some dude. Some dude. Yeah, some dude she was trying to objectify. I don't that know. That was fucked up. <laughs> that was messed up. All right. It was an interesting perspective. I like being put in a perspective where I'm like, I don't understand, but... It makes sense, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it would be cuter if it was from Space Corps' perspective. Murderous psychopath personality. Mm. Yeah, adorable. My Wait story is Katniss, Pyramid Head, which was recommended by Racino 2, uh, The Shire, which was recommended by Koyomatsu, and Post Coitus. I'm... Good luck. Just pretend that this is, like, really, really... Terrible fan fiction. Okay, it's really bad, yeah. yeah. Isn't it? Isn't it though? Isn't that the point? It was a bright and cheerful morning in the Shire, a soft glow falling on the grassy knolls and carefully tended flower beds that sat at the base of almost every windowsill. Mm -hmm. It was spring, mm -hmm. and chittering of birds and dew on the slowly growing produce filled the air with a newness that could only be provided by the season. While the center of the area was hustling and bustling as soon as the sun rose, an abandoned hobbit hole near the outskirts of the Shire was presently inhabited by less jovial spirits though no one could have guessed. Inside of the hovel were the ramshackle makings of what could become a nice home, old furniture that was still mostly intact due to the fine craftsmanship of Hobbiton woodworkers seemed broken under the weight of the dust that had been collecting for many years. The stench of stagnant water had crept out of a side room by the kitchen, as this home wasn't particularly close to a fresh source, and a roof full of gopher holes kept wow. refilling the rank supply. I never thought about, like, ghetto homes in, the, in Hobbiton. Yeah. Like, ghetto hobbit ho holes. Yeah, what because, like... What does the ghetto like, look like in Hobbiton? Well, I just described it. And like, people just you know. don't. You've described a house. So, in, in the ghetto part of Hobbiton, people don't. This was just like an abandoned house on the outskirts of town. It's just like Hobbits used to live there. It wasn't a great house, so they're just like, we don't want to live there. So they There's just never fixed it There's just a bunch of like dog pee spots out in front of it. <laughs> Old tires from cars that don't exist. <laughs> no, no school don't even stop there. They just go straight through. They're scared. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Down a shoddy hall was a side room that sounded as silent as death but held two living creatures. Well, one anyhow. A braid rustled from vigorous movement on the sheets that were clean despite the rest of the location's appearance sat across the chest of a bemused Katniss, who laid staring at the dirt ceiling in her line of vision. Her confusion came from shock, but not the kind she was expecting. Sitting cross-legged and crouching on the ground, Pyramid Head sat staring out the circular window not far from how does he fit? He's so pensive. He's sitting cross-legged okay. and crouching, so That's he's like, suck, I'm man. so tiny. That's gotta suck. Uh, okay, sitting cross-legged and crouching on the ground, Pyramid Head sat, uh, staring at the circular window not far off from the bed, whose frame was badly broken. Resting against the door frame on the ground was a large sword which was akin to an elongated butcher's knife. It had blood thick and black from the hours that had sat untouched on both the blade and the ground, but came from neither bodies in the room. Katniss sat up, wondering how 14 hours could have passed so quickly. Taking in her surroundings, she saw broken furniture, prints from hands clenched in rage and pleasure, and tatters of clothing, which she came to assume was his, as not much was left of, of the sad cloth he wore around his waist. <laughs> she fucking ripped off his clothing. Well, she's Katniss, man. <laughs> That's she just gonna be my sound something. when I don't want to explain anymore. She <laughs> has, like, a sexual 
hunger that cannot be quenched. That's the real Hunger Game. She would have feared him changing into a feral creature if she hadn't seen the transformation to another one the day before. Before coming upon him, she had been in a forest hunting rabbits so far as she was aware, but a mist surrounded her and the only clearing she came upon had this creature standing in its middle. At first sight of her, he charged and attempted to cut her down. Thankfully, she was well versed in fight or flight scenarios and managed to escape to the trees. She noticed that he wasn't swinging with intent and realized that if he was, she would have died quickly. She dropped down to assess whether this neurotic person was able to reason, as maybe the large helmet they wore was some sort of torture device. Did she they... just call Pyramid Head neurotic? I put a word in there. I didn't know what I was thinking at the time. <laughs> I, just, I just like that the first thing you think of when you see Pyramid Head is this neurotic guy. Well, she doesn't got know. anxiety. <laughs> she doesn't know. She just no, came no, up I on know, this muscly dude. I'm not insulting the story. I just think it's a funny way of describing him. She dropped down to assess whether this neurotic person was able to reason, as maybe the large helmet they wore was some sort of torture device and they thought their captors might still be nearby. She knew what it was like to be caged and didn't want whoever this was to suffer. She jumped down and immediately the creature stilled, the front line of his helm pointing at her. He was not a slight figure, standing at an impressive height with an equal amount of impressive muscle. Yeah. Wiggly eyebrows. Get that pyramid. Are you hurt? Do you need help? She called out to him. If you're in pain, I can help you. Can't he she? remained, huh? Can she? I don't know. She's well, she wants She's to help. Like, I can definitely help you, random person, with a weird thing I've never seen before in my life on okay. your head. Well, it's he's a fanfic, so leave got, me alone. He's got neurosis. <laughs> yeah, he's got neurosis. He remained unmoving, staring intently at her. Just as the tension between them was reaching its peak, he turned his head as rustling was heard, and creatures with white handprints jumped on top of him from above. Katniss pulled out her bow and began bringing the creatures down, assuming they were the cause of his pain. You don't get to use people for your own gains, Katniss said while firing two rapid succession shots at the creatures. Before long, Pyramid Head was falling five or six of the band of attackers at a time. As the last fell, Pyramid Head began full pursuit of Katniss, and she ran into the fading daylight into the woods. Just as she was about to reach what looked like a small town, she stopped, realizing there might be innocent people just beyond. As she turned to face him, she realized he had stopped, grasping his head and writhing in an unimaginable pain. To the far left, she saw an abandoned home and took off for it, the massive figure in great pain lumbering behind her. She crept into a side room, hoping the small home would provide a disadvantage for her pursuer. You see, this, this seems strange to me like when I'm hearing it, but at the same time, it's not that strange because there's weird shit in Middle Earth. Yeah. That's really strange. Real things. weird. He things. just looks like a regular guy in that in that like world. Does yeah. he? Kind of. He's just very muscular. And he's got a weird helmet. Like people dressed in weird helmets look at like the Eye of Sauron. Like look at shit like that. I have not seen the Eye of Sauron. Okay. Oh. You should check yeah. him out. Yeah. Should I? Is he hot? No. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can decide. Okay. The mouth of Sauron. I mean, not the eye. He On can't... his tongue. <laughs> it's uh, a piercing. Uh, uh, what? No, <laughs> that was a moment. I don't want to hear anything else about Sauron or his body parts. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Pyramid Head dropped his blade near the entrance to the side room, croaking out bated breath. He was done moving for the time being. What do you need? I can help you, Katniss said from a shadowed corner. Slowly, seeming to take hours, the creature wrote on the dust-covered ground. Remembered. Useless. What am I? Between the strange back and forth for several hours of questions and mostly single word answers, they bonded. He was made because of someone else's mistakes. Katniss was who she was because of a flawed system. Still grasping at straws of hate and a need for punishment, Katniss found that the reversal of roles somehow made them compatible. She gave punishment and Pyramid Head took it gratefully, somehow oh. feeling that his life now disconnected from a hateful act needed penance. Neither knew why they ended up in this tiny paradise, but they would rebuild the tiny home to be something comfortable, just like they would have to do with their lives. Pyramid Head was a submissive? My world is shattered. That's crazy. <laughs> By his large phallic blade. By, yes. He left that at the door. Yeah, he put... Literally. He, lo he left that behind. That was like a weird coming-of-age story. That was interesting. Is that it? I mean, yeah, that was that it. That was it, yeah. Because, okay, so here's what I was thinking with this, because I really don't... I haven't seen right. all the movies with Katniss, and I don't... You haven't played Silent Hill. Yeah, it's so. poopy. So, you told me that Pyramid Head was connected to that guy because James, of, yeah. he did a bad thing. So he's been disconnected from So, that. basically, this is like somewhere else... He hasn't got a purpose here. He doesn't have a purpose anymore. So they were just like, oh, we don't need you here, and he poofed up somewhere else. So he's basically impotent. Yeah. He's useless now as like a punisher because... He has no reason to be connected to that hate anymore. Okay. So now he's like, oh, I'm like an actual sentient being now. What do I do? And so she was like, 
that really sucks and you've been trapped in this situation for so long I know what that's like to be trapped in a situation that's horrible so and she's killed people too so that was really good Caitlin that was impressive like um I can't laugh at that one like I did Mariana's. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching again this week for Fan Fiction Friday. We hope you enjoyed the new format again. It was pretty good. Yeah! yeah it was um, fun. For those of you who don't enjoy the new format, we're sorry, but we enjoyed this a lot better, and a lot of people seem to enjoy it. Because we actually get to hear each other's stories. Because before, we didn't get to hear a lot of, like, only the person who was editing the video got to hear everybody's stories. Yeah. And this way, we get to share stories. And that was the whole point of the exercise in the first place. Was it's to, like a campfire. We, we get inspiration from each other, and we get positive feelings from each other's feedback, and we get to hear good stories told by good friends. <gasps> On Halloween, we should do an all-spooky submission and... Old Paul Blot. <laughs> and do a campfire, and we can tell <gasps> stories around a campfire. Oh, I'm Dude. down with spoopy stories. Yeah. Spoopy campfire stories. For look, Halloween. Look for that, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for people who just want just the story and don't want the back and forth, you can always go to Archive of Our Own and look up Three Hats, which is how we draw the character, location, and scenario. And then you can just read the story without any of us blathering at each other. Yeah. And yeah. if you guys want to suggest... We do blather. We do. If you guys want to suggest anything, and the fun thing about that is, you usually get to see all of the typos that we're <laughs> mentally correcting as we read. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We try I don't and, edit them. As we I try and hide them. those. If you, uh, if you also Bork. scroll down to the comments and make suggestions, we're happy to write them down. Um, try and make sure they're independent, so don't have Donald Trump Seto Kaiba on Donald Trump's wall. And Seto Kaiba is trying to jerk Donald Trump off. But you thought about that a lot. <laughs> Why did you have that ready to go? I don't know. I can't it's not just think a about subconscious money x money thing. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you next week with even more of this nonsense. Romance. And Love. Graphic segues. And neurosis. Mm. And space. Bye!